this is Brent with Emotiva. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about what happens when your amplifier protects, what can cause protection, how to identify protection, and some basic troubleshooting steps you can take uh, to get your amplifier back up and running or determine if it may need service. So maybe you woke up today and your Emotiva amplifier won't power on, or you're just setting up your system for the first time, you hit on and you're, you're getting uh, no audio and, and odd behavior from your amp. Well, there's some different things that can cause your amplifier to, to not power on, whether it's you know obviously something internal to the amplifier or an external factor. Some of these steps we can take and help us determine what is causing the amplifier to protect. Is it a connection on the amp, something like that. And so we'll just kind of run through the basic steps we usually ask customers to take if they're getting an error on their amplifier. Um, and so uh, the protection can look a couple different ways depending on if you have a basics amp or an XPA amp. Of course, if you have an amplifier from another brand, it may indicate protection a different way, um, but a lot of these same troubleshooting steps would still apply. Uh, these are very, uh, you know, kind of typical amplifiers. Um, not nothing super special as far as, you know, how they protect themselves. Um, and so when an amplifier protects, if it's a basics amp, what you'll get are all red lights uh, across the front where you usually get your blue uh, channel indicator lights. And so if you get red lights flashing across the front and the standby light uh, also flashing orange, that is a good indication that there is either something wrong with the amp or something wrong with the connections that are being made to the amp. So it is shutting down to protect itself and your other equipment from further damage. That's why we call it protection mode. We're trying to get the amp to protect itself instead of uh, you know flaming out on you. And so, uh, with the XPA amps, these can be a little more specific in indicating a potential cause of protection. Um, now, you may get a protection state where all of the lights uh, flash red on the front panel, but the XPA amps may also just flash one or two red lights indicating a problem with a specific module in the amplifier. So for example, if this light on the far left is, is flashing indicating protection, I'm gonna suspect that the module or the connections on the module that are all the way over on that side of the amplifier. Of course, if it's the middle light, then I'm gonna, gonna suspect the, the middle module. Each of those lights lines up with a different module in your amp, uh, even if you don't have all seven, uh, or you have some stereo modules mixed in with mono modules. Um, those lights on the front correspond to the different modules in the amp and can tell you to look for a problem on one specific channel or another. So now let's take a second to talk about a few of the different things that can cause your amplifier to go into protection. And first, I want to focus on um, when protection happens, not when you're first powering up the amp to use it, but after it's been powered up, maybe you've been enjoying some, some content, listening at, at moderate to loud levels, and the amplifier protects, right? Because that's a little bit different than the amplifier not being able to power up at all. And so if the amp is able to be powered on and after use, uh, after being used for some time, then enters protection, that typically indicates that the amplifier um, is just being overworked or overdriven in your system. Especially if this is happening at higher volume levels where you've been using the amp at, at higher output for, for a longer period of time and the amplifier protects, that, that usually indicates there's not something wrong with the connections or the associated speakers, it's more likely that you're just hitting the, uh, the limit of the amplifier. And it's gonna protect itself if it becomes too hot, if it, if it uh, detects distortion on the outputs and starts to clip. And again, protection is designed not just to protect the amplifier, but also to protect your speakers and other associated equipment. Um, and so we, we see more of that kind of protection with the basics amps that are not quite uh, as high powered as the XPA amps. Um, you know, especially if you're running large, full range towers um, on the, the basics A3 or A5, for example, um, you know, and you're really pushing the system at, at near reference levels, that's where we're gonna see protection. And, and it's a good indicator that maybe you've overdriven the amplifier. If after it protects, you're not able to turn it back on for, for 15 or 20 minutes. Sometimes it needs that time to kind of, uh, you know, cool off and rest and then it'll let you power it back on. Uh, if it then does power back up and continues playing until pushed hard, um, you know, where it protected before, that's probably a good indicator the amp is fine. It has successfully protected itself. It'll come back up a little later and keep performing, 
But if you are gonna keep pushing the amplifier in the same way, it keeps protecting, um, you know, reach out to us, we may have some advice, or you may need to consider a more powerful amp like from the XPA series. Um, we, we rarely, I think, see these protect um, due to just being clipped or overdriven into speakers. Um, you know, they're, they're a more robust amp and capable of driving most loads. Of course, if you have a very demanding speaker of some kind, you know, you may run into that more. Um, but, but for the most part, these are, are less prone just because they have more power to give. Um, they, they don't quite, you know, give up in the same way. But if, you know, like any amp and speaker combination, they will have a limit if you're pushing it hard um, again and, and the amplifier shuts off. Um, but then you're able to turn it on, you know, maybe 20 minutes later and continue playing again, the amplifier has likely successfully protected itself uh, from damage, protected your speakers from damage, and, and we may just need to be a little more careful uh, with the volume control or change some settings in our speakers, maybe cross some speakers over instead of playing them full range. Um, you know, that kind of thing. Um, so one, one other note I'll make on, you know, if you are using the amp and it is able to play audio, but then maybe at lower volume levels or moderate volume, you know, where you're, you're not even really close to pushing the amp hard, it starts to shut down that can be an indicator that maybe there's something wrong with one of the speakers that's connected. Um, you know, if the amp is able to turn on with the connections and only shuts down when it's pushed hard, um, you know, check your speakers, make sure that all the tweeters are playing, uh, make sure that any woofers or mid-range drivers are moving freely in the speaker. You can just kind of gently push on those drivers. If there's a, a frozen driver in your speaker, maybe, uh, you know, a blown tweeter, um, once you start pushing that speaker, it can kind of present as a short and the amp may shut down. So that's just, just kind of something to look at. Um, what I want to focus on in the rest of the video is what happens if your amplifier is protecting when you just first power it up and it's not really able to turn on at all. And so, uh, you know, let's say for example, you were just using the amp the other day, um, you know, nothing of note has happened, no lightning storm, power vent, anything like that that could have, you know, caused uh, electrical damage. And you turn your system on one day and you get amplifier protecting. It doesn't even come on so you can play audio through it. Well, in that case, it's very likely that either there is an external connection that is causing this fault, or it's possible there's a fault in the amplifier itself that may need service um, here at Emotiva. Well, here's the first thing we do in that case. If your amplifier is not even powering up the first time you turn it on, um, what we want to do is cut the main power switch on the amplifier. So I'm gonna shut it completely down by removing the main power. Um, you can, of course, unplug it as well, but just cutting that main power switch accomplishes the same thing. Um, and if you're using any kind of active power conditioner, so I don't mean a surge protector, I mean an active power conditioner that's doing some filtering to the, the AC circuit. Um, you know, we in general don't recommend using a power conditioner with these amplifiers. Um, they're simply gonna demand uh, more uh, power than uh, many power conditioners are able to supply. Uh, they can interfere with the switching operation of the power supply in the XPA amps. So we recommend you know, plugging them directly into the wall regardless or using a passive surge protector without active filtering. Um, but a step that we'll do after we cut the main power, if you are using a power conditioner, you know, plug the amp directly into the wall just to kind of eliminate that as a variable. And in general, I wanna try to leave the amp off for you know, 20 minutes or so just to, to make sure it's had a, a time to, to fully shut down and kind of drain out. Uh, and during that 20 minute period, when the amplifier is completely removed from power, what I'll be doing is removing all of the speaker and input connections on every channel of the amplifier so that only the power cord is connected directly into the wall. In that case, uh, once I've you know, removed all those connections and I, I hit the main power of the amp to bring it back on, I can then bring it out of standby. You know, we, we wanna remove triggers as well just in case they're causing any interference. Um, if the amplifier comes on nice and happy with blue lights um, with no connections on the inputs or the speaker uh, binding post, that is a good indicator that there is something about one of those connections to one of the channels that was causing the amplifier to protect. Otherwise, if it was a failure internal to the amplifier, it would protect regardless of whether there are connections or not. So at this point, if I say, you know, turned on this Basics A5 with no speaker or input connections, only the power cord directly into the wall after a rest period of, you know, 20 or 30 minutes, and then I powered on and it gave me all red lights still with no connections, 
there's not really much else that could cause protection other than some fault in the amplifier that either is just you know an electronic component failure or something that was perhaps caused by one of the connections that was previously in place. Um, and so you know from here, if the amps came up with red lights with no connections but the power cord, um, I would be reaching out to Emotiva to see about getting the amplifier serviced either under or outside the warranty. We still service most of our amplifiers, um, and, and then uh, you know get the issue resolved there. Now, there's some more steps to be done though if the amplifiers like this power up with all blue lights with all of the connections removed. Again, if it's protecting with the connections, not protecting without them, that kind of points us to uh, the connections to the amplifier as a potential cause. And so there are a couple different ways we can go about uh, kind of finding which connection is maybe the culprit. On the XPA amps, we already talked about how they can indicate you know, which specific module is having the issue. So when you see protection, note which light is indicating protection because it's telling you which module to look at. And so, you know, on the XPA amps, if it's just one module protecting, you can try connecting everything but that one channel speaker where it was protecting. Or, you know, in general, on both of the amps, a good practice is to just make one channel connection at a time with the amplifier off, powering it on as you add each channel to the amp. And so I may connect channel one, power the amp on, see if it protects. If it doesn't, then I know the connections to channel one were not the cause of the initial protection. Then I'll power the amp off, make my connections to channel two, both the speaker and the input, turn the amp on and see if it protects. Let's say eventually I get to channel four. I've connected one, two, and three, powering the amp off in between each time to make those connections. And then I get to channel four, add those connections back, and the amplifier protects. Well, that's a very good indicator that whatever is being connected to channel four is either the cause of the protection or that maybe channel four under load is having an issue. So in that case, if you know I determine whatever I'm connecting to channel four is causing the protection, but whatever I connected to channel three, for example, didn't cause protection, then I may try to swap those connections between two of the channels and then see, well, does the protection happen no no matter what channel I connect this certain speaker to, or is it only when something's connected to channel four that I get protection? We can swap some connections around and see does the issue follow the specific speaker, or is the amplifier always protecting on the same channel no matter what speaker input is, is, is connected? And so, for example, on the XPA amp, let's say the second light from the left was indicating protection. That would indicate this uh, second module in the back here. I have one uh, over here and then the second module here. And so what I might do is first remove the speaker and input connections just from the channel that's indicating protection and see if the amplifier powers up with blue lights or if it still protects. Now, if it still protects when I've removed everything from that module, I would wanna remove everything from the amp and, and like we kind of discussed before. But if it comes up nice and blue, uh, no protection when I remove those connections, connections, then I'm likely going to take the connections from another channel, uh, maybe the adjacent module that, that wasn't having an issue, and put them on that second module, take the connections that were causing protection on the second module, put them on the first module, and then see Am I still getting protection on light number two, or did the, the protection move with the connections? If it moves and follows the connections, that's a really good indicator that the amplifier is protecting itself successfully, and there's something about the speaker wiring, or the connections to the speaker, or a bad speaker driver, like a tweeter or frozen woofer that we discussed previously. Uh, and so, again, just to recap, Anytime you're getting protection on either of these amplifiers, whether it tells you a single channel or overall protection, removing all of the speaker and input connections, plugging the amplifier directly into the wall after having left it off for around 20 minutes, then powering it back on to see if it protects with no connections is always the first step we're gonna take when we're getting amplifier protection. From there, it's all about either adding one channel at a time to see which channel is the cause of the protection, and then swapping connections between channels to see does the protection always happen on that same channel with something connected, or is the protection only happening when I connect a certain speaker or input to that channel? And that'll at least give us a really good idea of what might be causing the protection and help you kind of sort out if maybe you have a, a, a crossed speaker wire or loose connection somewhere that's causing protection. Of course, if the amplifiers are protecting no matter what, you're getting red lights, they won't power on, even with just the power cord directly into the wall, it's a really good sign that those amps are gonna need service of some kind uh, to resolve whatever caused the protection state. 
Thanks for joining us today, and hopefully this video was helpful in sorting out the cause of your amplifier protection, helping you avoid protection in the future, or determining if there may in fact be an issue with your amplifier. Of course, you should reach out to us at Emotiva Support if your amplifier will still not power on and is stuck in protection. From all of us here at Emotiva, happy listening.